Income tax 2022-2023, marginal and average tax rates examples. Let's do some wealth preservation with income tax preparation. Here we are in our example form 1040. We're using Lacert tax software. Although you don't need tax software to follow along, if you have access to it, running scenarios as we will be doing here is great practice. In future presentations, we're going to go through the components of the 1040 in more detail. Right now, we're looking at and focusing on the calculation of the tax, seeing how the software is helpful to do that calculation, but then also wanting to understand the concept of marginal tax and average tax. Most tax software doing that calculation for us and how we might use those numbers to communicate with a client. So right now we have our scenario being the filing status is single. We have Neo Anderson, Mr. Anderson. We have them living in California, but we're really just focusing in on the uh, federal tax preparation at this time. We're just going to start with a flat 100,000 W-2 income uh, so we can have our calculation. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. We're just using the standard deduction down below. That gives us then this 87,050. So the bottom of the form 1040 is basically kind of a modified income statement, getting us down to the equivalent of net income for tax basis, basically that taxable income. This is the number now that we're going to apply the tax to. If it was a simple flat tax, then we would just be multiplying this times one rate. That would be the flat rate in order to get the actual tax. Notice that even if it was a flat tax, it's still a complicated system because all the deductions and whatnot get somewhat complicated and we're not yet done after we calculate the tax here because we might also have credits that are applied to it down below and then we can think about the payments. So even if it was a flat tax, it wouldn't be the simplest of systems, but we know we don't have a flat tax. We have a progressive tax. Because the progressive tax is quite complex and we can see the progressive tax kind of reflected in uh, tables like this that we looked at in prior presentations, meaning as our income goes up, we're gonna have multiple tax rates that are gonna be applied to that calculation. We often depend on the software to do the calculation. So oftentimes if I was to double check this number in practice, I'm gonna be able to double check and I usually do double check using Excel to get down and recalculate this taxable income so I can make sure I've got my data input correct. We'll talk more about that in the future, but we're gonna be more reliant oftentimes on the software to do the actual calculation because of the progressive tax system and because it'll get even more complex than just these different tables when we get into different things that might be taxed as ordinary income versus capital income, dividend income could be taxed at different rates and so on and so forth. So it gets quite complex. The problem of course then is we wanna be able to one, think and see if this number looks correct since it's not just easy to recalculate it. And two, we wanna be able to communicate that information to a client. They're gonna say, well, how did you get to that number? Well, we're gonna to have to say something. Well, yeah, there's a progressive tax system that is being applied to get to that number, but they don't usually wanna hear a whole long detail about that. What we wanna do is kind of break it down to a simple number, which is usually an average, but we also wanna look at the marginal rate because that'll have certain implications for budgeting into the future. So that's usually what we're gonna to communicate to a client. Most of the times those things, of course, are calculated by the software, but not actually on the form 1040. So this software, for example, has a summary calculation over here. And so it's got the same kind of uh, income statement type of calculation, 
But then down at the bottom, it gives us the marginal tax rate, which is the highest tax rate, and the effective tax rate, which is going to be the average tax rate. So that's what we're focused in on here. So once again, if we were to do this in practice, we're going to probably, and we'll double check the calculation to get down to the taxable income in a formula kind of component here. I will do that in Excel to get to the uh, taxable income. And then we're going to actually apply the tax or calculate the tax, which is usually going to be done by the software taxable income to the tax. And then we're going to communicate with a client and we're going to be saying, okay, what's, what's then the average tax? Well, I could say, well, there's a progressive tax system, but you got taxed basically on average. We can think of it as the 14774 divided by the taxable income, not the gross income. I'm taking the taxable income here. So the bottom of like an in the income statement after the deductions, 87050. And that's going to give us about 17. If I move the decimal over about the 17%, that's how they're coming up with that 17%. That also gets more complicated and stuff. If you've got self-employment tax and that kind of stuff that is applied, if you've got a schedule C, we'll talk a little bit more about that in the future, but you could say, you know, that's about average what you're being taxed on, not on the gross income, not on what's on your W2, but rather what's, what's on your net income after the deductions. But that's not the number that you usually want to use to plan in the future. If you think you're going to earn more or less money in the future, you're not going to be taxed on your next dollar at 17%. You're going to be taxed at your highest tax bracket, which is the 22% here. So if you're going to, if you're going to earn more or less money and you're trying to try to figure out how much tax you're going to pay, you can't use the average. That's just, that's not a really useful number, although it kind of encapsulates possibly in some way the tax that was actually paid the useful number for action in the future is the marginal tax because if you earn more money in the future you're going to be taxed at the highest tax bracket here so if i look at if i look at my tables for example note that we had a single single filer tax brackets uh, for 2022 and we're going to say that that the tax was or the taxable income was not the 100,000, it's the 8750. So we're looking at the 8750. So we, we would be in between here, right? And that would be the highest tax would be at the 22%. So that's where they're getting that 22%. We can kind of see it in uh, a table type of format. Okay, so now let's play with it a little bit. And let's say, okay, well, what if their income uh, goes up? So it's, so it's into the 24% tax bracket or something like that. If I go over here and say, what's going to happen if I bring this up to say 120,000 and back on over, that means now I've got my wages at 120 and then I've got my deduction, the standard, which we'll get into later for that calculation, 12,950. But the idea here is now I've changed my taxable income to the 10750. So at the 10750, we're at the effective or average tax rate of the 18.2% and the marginal tax rate is now 24 because that 10750, if I look at my table, I say 10750 uh, is in between here. So we're at the 24% and, they, and you can then think about how much more income they would have to earn before they get up to that next dollar hitting the 32%, remembering to remind the client that that does not mean that all of your income is now then going to be taxed at 32%. I'm giving you one number, even though you're being taxed with three different tax rates at this point in time, because I'm trying to encapsulate in a single number what's going to happen so that possibly you can use that number to conceptualize what you've been taxed and the marginal tax rate to be used to actually do tax planning, you know, into the future. Now, when we look at these tax brackets, notice that we have different different brackets for a single filer versus a married filing separate tax brackets and then head of household tax brackets and then married filing jointly. So uh, the, that obviously is going to add more complexity to the situation. So if I had a single filer making, let's bring it back to the 100,000, 100,000, this is where we started with, but the tax brackets on your on your marginal and average will be different 
if I now say that we only we have the 100,000 for a married couple. So I'm now going to say we have married filing jointly here. And so now we've got a, a two individuals. And if I go to my ta tax summary, we've got the same 100,000. So I didn't change the income, but now we have two people uh, involved. And you can see there's a drastic change in the tax and therefore the marginal and effective tax rate. So if I go back on over, I could say, okay, what happened? We have the 100,000, the standard deduction, as we'll talk about later, has increased because deductions are good. And now you've got two people. So you would think the deduction would kind of have to double. Uh, and this is all somewhat complex because note in the past, it used to be thought of that you would have like a one income household oftentimes. And so, so that if, if you were, if you were thinking when the, the tax code started, you had situations where you had like a, like a, a one income household, one person worked for the same company for their entire life and their wages were fairly predictable from period to period because they worked at that same company the whole time. Obviously those things have changed quite a bit. Most people have to have two people working oftentimes and most people don't spend their all their time at one job and they possibly have income from multiple uh, sources and, and have multiple people working. So that makes the calculations a lot different. What we would expect you wouldn't want the tax system to do is disincentivize marriage. That, that would seem like not a good socially uh, constructive thing to do. So you would think then if you have two people, you'd have to increase or double the deductions, right? Which is basically what happens. So that same 100,000, if it was for a married couple now results in the taxable income going to the 74, thousand one hundred and so now when i look at my tables here i have to look at the proper table married filing jointly and now i'm looking at the taxable income of not a hundred thousand but that 70 something which i think is in between here which and also the brackets are different so notice you had 10 to 12 the 12 is at the 20 to, to 83 versus up here we had uh the the 10 to the 41 at the 12 so we have totally different tables right which you can understand why you would need to do that but again it gets quite complex quite quickly but the bottom line for our calculation here is that the effective tax is uh, 11 and that's going to be and that's like the average and then the marginal is the 12 so that's the highest rate now if you have your two people that were married and we go to their wages and their wages double I won't put a spouse's income yet, but let's just say, you know, because they're one entity, but now it goes up to 200,000. So now you've got the 200,000 minus the 25,900. And so that gives us the 174,100, the tax at the 29,536 here. And our focus down here being that the marginal rate is now at 22, the effective tax at 17. If I look at that 174,100, on our tables we're going to say okay 174 is in between here so the highest bracket is the 22 the 22 so that's the general idea so when you're doing the tax preparation most likely we're looking at the 1040 and we're going okay i'm going to make sure my data input is all correct i'm going to verify it also with an excel worksheet which i generally do i would do in practice as well to double check that the taxable income is correct and then page two, we've got the actual tax calculation, which I'm dependent uh, to some degree on the tax software because it's gonna get more and more complex. You can, you can see the calculations uh, in the software get more detail oftentimes with the schedules here. And then when I communicate with a client or when I talk about projections into the future, we're not gonna get too into the weeds about, about the fact that you were taxed at multiple tax rates but instead we're going to try to summarize it in some way that is comprehensible into one tax rate which is often given in the tax software in some kind of summary where we're going to say yes your average tax rate was 17 percent remember the 17 percent however isn't applied to your gross income it's applied it's applied to your basically your net income or your taxable income after the deductions and you also have more complexity involved if you had credits that are going to be applied to it as well because that happens after you know the tax calculation and if you had something else that was applied such as the self-employment tax for schedule c business 
that also kind of muddies up the calculation but that's the general idea when you make decisions in the future you want to use your marginal tax rate if your income goes up significantly then you might go into a higher tax bracket which doesn't mean that all your taxes will be taxed at the higher tax bracket but the dollars you earn after that threshold will be taxed at the higher tax bracket and if you're going to earn a lot more if your earnings are a lot different next year to this year we should probably do some projections so that we can try to figure out uh, what your tax should be and what your estimates should be and so on and so forth in the future. So that's the general idea.